Last, last night I woke up at four o'clock in the morning with a thought running through my mind. Did we fail Mike Adams? He's the University of North Carolina at Wilmington professor who fought the system because they refused him tenure for his conservative stances and he won. We know that he went out and made a stand against abortion and was willing to go and speak anywhere to anyone on those things. He spoke on our Judeo-Christian values, and he spoke on the values that made America great. But each time that he did that, he was met with hostility from the press, hostility from students, and hostility from the administrators at the University System of North Carolina. And where were we? You know, so many times we have warriors out here. I'd like to think I've been one of them on occasion. And you go out and you're standing up for values, you're standing up for principles, and then you find yourself alone. I think of our president each and every day. The press spends their entire day trying to conscrew anything he says into something negative, into something that he didn't say, or giving it meaning that wasn't there. Calling people racist, calling them you know, every name under the book. And yet many of us sit back and say, oh, well, they're strong. They're out there fighting. You know, we appreciate what they're doing, but are we there for them? When we think about our ministers out here trying to profess the word of God, those from a conservative point of view, and they're suffering the slings and arrows that are thrown at them from every direction. Are we praying for them? Are we lifting them up? Are we telling them how much we appreciate them? What I'm trying to say, folks, is during all of this time here in this year of 2020, a lot of people have spent a lot of time at home. How many of you have picked up a phone and called a friend just to ask them how they were doing? How many of you have went and tried to make sure that an older adult who was limited in their movement before this but looked forward to going to church or looked forward to going to a social event and seeing people or seeing their family who are now been locked away so that they can't see anybody because of the fears, you know, of this virus. How many of you have you called? How many of you have you taken the time to see how they were doing? Folks, we need to pray for our friends. We need to be there for our friends. And we need to let them know. But on top of that, folks, we need to start standing up for America. We need to start standing up for the very values that made America great. And yes, they were Judeo-Christian values. It's plain from the very beginning, from the Pilgrim's Landing, you know, those on the Mayflower, the people that established Jamestown, the people that is that landed at Roanoke. They came from a heritage of Judeo-Christian values. And that's what made this country great. And yet, we sit back and let the, quote, woke generation destroy those values, tear down any statues that they deemed to be offensive, they let them riot, let them try to take over our country. And yet we have people like Mike that are out there on a day-to-day -day basis getting death threats, getting threatened, having the people that they work with on a day-to-day -day basis sharpening their knives to stick them in the back at the first opportunity. And where are we for them? I'm just telling you folks, it's time that we stand up. It's time that we support our warriors. It's time that our elected politicians who adhere to the Judeo-Christian values that we propose to believe in, it's time that we stand up beside them and let people know that we're not going to let our friends be intimidated. We're not going to let our country be intimidated. And we are going to stand up. It's time. It's time, folks. So when you sit there today, I want you to think, have we let our country down? Have we let our warriors down? Have we let the people that are out there fighting for us and our values, have we let them down? It's time to stand up.